Hi friends. So over on the Facebook group, um, ATC Tips, Tutorials, and Trades, there is an event going on for, um, I believe it's Thanksgiving, where they are, the Elks Club is putting together um, care packages, I believe is what it is for veterans. And so what they, we are doing over there is making cards, ATCs, gift tags, just a little something to put into those um, gift baskets for the veterans. And um, you can make as many as you want and each one that you make is an entry into the contest. Um, and then um, each one that you make is numbered and then random.org is going to be utilized in order to pick the winners and the winners are for um, prizes of crafty such items okay so um, it's a very good drawing and I encourage you all to go over there and join the page so that you can participate in this because not only will you have a chance of winning something, but you have the opportunity to give back to our um, veterans. So I am, and we have until October 1st to do, to get these cards um, in. So you do have a bit of time to do this. So I'm starting mine, and so what I wanted to do is, when I had my live show um, last week on the 20th, um, Sean, Mr. Tellerian, he had challenged me to do an American flag on my jelly plate, so I did. And I did the flag, and it came out okay. <laughs> I got a couple of pretty good, I freshened up the paint on the jelly plate a couple of times and I um, put a heart stencil over it and this is one of the prints that I got off of it. And so what I did is I put this on my printer which I can copy on my printer and I reduced it down 75% from this and I printed out six smaller images and got this. So this isn't actual jelly prints, but this is a copy of my jelly print, which I think looks really, really cool. So it's not the actual paint because the paint is actually kind of chippy and you know, it's not the original, but it's a copy of the original, which looks exact, right? It looks pretty good. Now the one thing on my jelly plate that I didn't realize, which it's kind of that dyslexic thing that I have is when I made the American flag, I didn't do it reverse. I didn't do a mirror image of it. I actually did the jelly plate image as it was, you know, how it looked. Whereas I should have done it reverse. Like I put it, should have put my stars and stripes like this. I should have put them over here so that when I put my paper down and did my image and then flipped it over, my stars and stripes would have actually been over here. But I didn't do that because I didn't think ahead. But that's okay. You know, that's what you learn. That's the first time I had ever tried to do an image, a thought out mirrored image print. But you learn every time you do something, art is a, can be a learning process, and so I learned that next time I'm trying to do an image that needs to be in a certain position, that I need to mirror the image on the jelly plate. I don't do it as I see it um, as I'm sitting here. I need to do it opposite so that when I do the print, it's mirrored. Regardless, the image came out absolutely cool in my eyes. It came out cool. So what I'm going to do is 
this heart right here actually looks the most um, unified. It looks the most heart shaped. So I'm going to take a pencil <coughs> and I'm going to just give this a light trace because this is the one that I'm actually going to cut out and I'm going to use this one as a template for the others so that all of my hearts are um, cut out to the same shape because I want them to all basically be the same shape. It'll just be easier for me to cut out rather than trying to guess my lines since they're not all um, perfectly crisp. Okay, so I've got that. I think I'm going to use my little scissors if I can find them because they usually fall down in my scissor can because they're small. But here they are. We got them. And I am just going to cut this first one out. Now I know, and it was kind of sad for me to waste this much cardstock, but um, I'll be able to use it. I'll be able to reuse the cardstock that didn't get printed on. So never fear. Don't think that I'm going to throw all of this cardstock that doesn't have a print on it into the crap trash can because I won't. I will utilize it. That is one thing that I am very thrifty with um, something that you don't see me using or, you know, I cut something out of. Um, I do save it and attempt to find a use for it. Even last night I made these little hearts as I was editing a video because as you guys know I, I, I have to be doing something even I mean last night I was editing I talked to my husband when he got home from work and we had a conversation and even during all of that I made these little hearts because you know I got that new Fisker punch if you watched my um, Joanne um, Hall video I got um, a couple of items from Joanne um, online and so I just sat and I wanted to try my new punch because I was very excited to get it. And so I just sat and made these little hearts. So simple to make, but I always have to keep my hands busy because I'm just that way, you know, and I can sit and listen. Um, when I do my videos, you know, I can watch with one eye. I can listen and make sure that there's nothing that I need to cut out or, you know, cut out in the video. Let's say if if I show, accidentally show an address um, of somebody that sent me something, I can um, edit that out. Or if there's a long pause in the video that I want to cut out, um, if I say something that I don't necessarily want in the video, I'll cut that out. So. Um, you know, I, I can kind of have one eye on the video as it's re as it's replaying as I'm editing. Um, I can be listening with my ears when I'm on the phone with a friend. Um, I can be listening and keeping my hands busy when I'm talking to my husband, or um, you know, I can keep, be keeping my hands busy and getting something done. So that is what I do. I'm constantly creating. If it's not that, I mean it's just, it's just like anything else, right? As as we work like right now, I'm working and I'm talking. I'm getting better at it. I am. It's taken me a while because I used to have to be able to do everything in silence. It's like, shh, I can't concentrate. But I am getting a little bit better at it. It has taken some time. 
especially I mean especially when I'm doing more complicated things like this isn't complicated to me um, punching punching paper isn't complicated to me gluing it even though you know I like that I just moved my my template but that's okay it's a pencil I can erase it it's not a big deal but you know you um, it's a skill and that's one of the skills that's really helped me in making these videos isn't it strange how I keep going off in that same spot it's a skill that I've learned in making these videos because it was hard if you go back to my very first crafting videos I would sit here and I wouldn't know what to say like it was it's hard to sit in at first and sit and talk um, and you're basically, I'm basically sitting here talking to myself. But now that I know you guys, I've built a relationship with you guys, I feel like I am speaking to my friends. Like I'm having, right now, I feel like I'm having a conversation with my friends, which I am. It's just a delayed conversation. You're not going to hear this until I get it up on the internet. But I feel like I'm sharing this moment with um, people that I care about and people I'm having friends with. I wish we could all be in the same room together and we could be sharing this moment together. In a sense we are, which just we're all sharing it at different moments, different times, different time zones. But eventually we all come together and we've all seen it. We've all shared this moment at different moments. It's all its all kind of weird when you think about it. That we've all shared this moment at different times. It's like mind-blown, right? That we're all sharing this moment at different moments. I know. I know. Always thinking about the the weirdest things but those are the things that go through my mind so I know you guys aren't going to want to sit me and watch me cut all of these out so I might turn the camera off and um, just cut my little cut my little heart out <laughs> oh I'm so witty So what more can I talk about? Girls did school. Oh, my dog. I could tell you about my dog. My dog has an abscessed anal gland. Now that's some excitement, isn't it? So yesterday morning I had to get up and take her to the vet because that's what I thought it was. But you know, with older dogs, you never know. You know, you automatically think tumor, and you automatically think cancer, and then you automatically think, oh, no, I'm going to have to have her put down because she is 13 years old. And she's relatively been a pretty healthy dog. However, about a year ago, she did develop this tumor on one of her feet that the doctor had to remove. And um, so, you know, I always, you, you just do, you automatically just think, especially in an older dog, oh, she's getting up there, you know, and you're just always waiting. And she's a very healthy dog. She's always been a healthy dog. But she got this abscess on her butt, and I noticed it pretty quickly because she's always next to me. Like right now, she's under my desk by my feet. And um, since she's always there, I noticed that she was licking her butt. You know, and licking her butt once is not a big deal, but when she's down there excessively licking her butt, for one thing, it's annoying, and you're like, quit licking your butt. Because for one thing, you're grossing me out, and for another thing, that's not normal. Why the heck are you licking your butt? And so I looked, and she had a... Uh, an abscess. I mean, you guys know what an abscess looks like. I doubt you want me to describe it, do you? So anyway, she... I took her upstairs and 
gave her a bath mainly to make her sit into some hot water and I put some peroxide on it and made her sit down in the tub and I tried to squeeze it because there was a hole I mean I could see the hole and I thought that you know because with anal glands but she's never had an issue with anal glands but with anal glands you have to squeeze them to get that ick out of there and so I tried to squeeze it, but this was really hard. So then I started to think, well, maybe it isn't an anal gland, or maybe she's got a tuber in her anal gland. So I got a little bit of pus out of it, but not much. I mean, and it was hard as a rock. So I said, okay, well, I'm just going to take her to the vet. Uh, this was Saturday night, and the vet's not open on Sunday, but I, it wasn't an emergency. So I waited until Monday morning, called the vet early Monday morning and said, can I bring her in? He said, yeah, bring her in, in the mor bring her in this morning. So got up, got the girls up, got them ready, took her to the vet, and he said, yep, yeah, it's a clogged anal gland. So he, it had already closed, like the hole had already closed up. So he had to jam the little tube that the medicine comes out of and um, reopen it and oh my gosh she scratched the dickens out of me because I had to be the holder when he shoved that thing back up in there and it was really raw at the time and then um, he gave me oral antibiotics to give her and he brought sent me home with that tube of medicine that I have to stick up there twice a day and squirt the medicine in it which is joy So her abscess is doing better. I've put the medicine in last night and this morning. She's had two doses of the oral antibiotic and it already looks better. So I have to do the squirt the medicine up into the anal gland until it closes, until I can no longer get that up in there, which I hope that's sooner than later because I don't like doing it. Thank goodness I have a medical background and it doesn't bother me that much, but I know that it hurts. She was pretty good this morning. I couldn't find the tube. I have to put everything up because Brooklyn is an ointment kind of a girl. She likes to get into anything ointmenty or lotiony. So I had to put it up. And this morning, Scott leaves early in the morning, but I told him, I said, wake me up because I need him to hold her. You know, I can't hold both ends. <laughs> and um, so he woke me up before he was leaving, and I was half asleep, and I'm like, I don't know where I put it. I know I put it up, and I couldn't find it. And he had to leave, and I'm like, okay, just go. I'll figure out how to get it up there. And so then I couldn't go back to sleep because I was racking my brain. Where the heck did I put the ointment? And I finally found it. I had put it up on my craft shelf. But I had set it on top of a paper piece of paper towel. And so the paper towel was kind of folded up around the box that the ointment's in. And so I, I couldn't see it. Because my craft shelf is so full of stuff that the paper towel just like looked like something that was supposed to be there like wasn't anything that looked out of the ordinary because it was sitting next to my um, glue glitters so I found it and I put her up on the table and she didn't fight me too bad so I was able to get it up in there real quick and it looks you know good so I don't think that it hurts her as bad and so I got that done and then I just stayed up. So I've been up since Scott had to leave for work. And that's not good when you don't go to bed at at um, 2 a.m. And you get up at 6.30. So we did school. I did school a little bit early today because the girls got up. And um, since they were up, I just... You know, they fed him breakfast and did it early. So they're up in the bathtub now. I figured while they were in the bathtub, we would get this done because I've got to take them over to the park and let them burn some energy this afternoon since it's nice and our days are going to start getting shorter. And But they... 
So I wanted to get this started, and obviously I'm not going to be able to do this whole video because they're not going to be in the bathtub that long, and I don't even really know what I'm going to do. If I'm going to make tags out of these. I think I'm going to make tags. For them to take a bath, it's not really like a bath, like let's go take a bath in and out. It's a play session in the bathtub. I really enjoy talking to you guys. I wish you could talk back. Hey, everybody to my house for a craft session. So I think I'm only going to make, um, you know, I'm not going to make them all the same. But I wanted to use this paper that I, or this jelly print. And I really had, I mean, Sean, Mr. Tellerian, he's the one that suggested this. So when I made this um, jelly print, I had no idea that I was going to use it for this. But it came to me later that, hey, why don't you use that jelly print? I mean, I think that it would be perfect for this project. You don't, it's a Thanksgiving or fall theme, but you don't have to use that for this project like you can use an American theme or a Thanksgiving theme you know it's Thanksgiving but they're veterans so they served our country so by all means you can do an American theme so I thought that this would be perfect the only the, there is they did ask that you don't use any glitter so And what says thank you more than a heart? And so, so the um, jelly prints, they copy really well. So keep that in mind when you make your jelly prints. Um, and if you really like one or it's a theme jelly print like this, um, you know, because you got to keep in mind that mono printing is just that. It's mono printing. You're not going to get a similar print the same ever again. You can try to duplicate it, but um, you're not ever going to be able to get the exact print again. So if it's something that you really like, make a copy of it, scan it, put it in your printer or into your computer and save it because there might be a time where you want to do something with that print again but if you've cut it up and you've used it for something else you're not going to be able to use it again because it's gone well that's with any artwork you know if you do a, a piece that's something that you're going to give away um, or cut up to use even if it's just a piece of paper that you made but you really liked it just scan it and put it in your computer and then make a print of it so that you don't have to remake the project I mean unless you want to like there's many times where I've reprinted or where I've remade a style of painted paper or um, stamped paper. I've done that a lot. But if it's something, you know, that you don't necessarily want to do and you just want to have it at hand, then make a copy like this. I mean, look at how good this copied. I get my ink from a company. It's like off-market ink. It's not made by the company that makes um, HP printers. It's called Ink Farm. Inkfarm.com and it's great ink and it's a fraction of the cost from getting it from HP. And so um, 
I don't pay a fortune for my printer ink. So I don't cringe when I, you know, go to use my printer because I don't pay hundreds of dollars to replace the ink in it. And I don't ever have an issue with my ink. So if you um, use your printer for a lot of things, if you print a lot, go check them out. And um, I actually have a 10% a off code for them where you get 10% off of your order and free shipping. So I will put that down in the description box and a link to their website so that you can utilize that code for 10% off your order and free shipping. And if you want to order your ink from there, and it's money back guaranteed, so if you get it and you don't like their ink, just send it back and they'll give you your money back. It's 100% guaranteed. So if you decide that you don't like it, just send it back to them and they'll give you your money back. So there's no risk. I've never had a problem with their ink. Now, my printer's a different story. <laughs> Me and my printer have a love-hate relationship. He's been acting better. He has been better. I had a talk with him, and I told him, buddy, I have one or two. I said, I have two words for you. No, I have one word. It's one word. I have one word for you. Landfill. And he's he, um, shaped up. He's been doing much better. So, after that little talk, he seems to be... Seems to be behaving. But it has, the problems that I have with that printer... It's over here listening. It has nothing to do with the ink. It's all added. If you want to participate in this, and you don't necessarily want to be in the contest or the drawing, you can make some of these and just send them directly to me. And I will send them on to the person that's hosting. And um, she'll get them to the... to the um, people that are doing the gift baskets to the veterans. That's another option too. You know, just kind of a random act of kindness kind of thing just to thank them. And then when I ship mine off to her. I can just, you know, ship a big box. You guys know my address is always below the videos in the description box. So if that's something you want to do, I'll be glad to pass those on. I know that not everybody is on Facebook and then not everybody wants to join um, a ATC group, which is understandable. And so if this is something that you want to do but not join a group specifically to do this, but you still want to make um, the veterans some special cards to thank them to put into their little baskets, then by all means just go ahead and make some up and um, Send them to me and then I'll get them to the appropriate person. This makes you feel good inside, you know, to do things for others. Especially them. And our government's totally forgotten about them and they 
struggle financially, I struggle emotionally. I just keep getting more and more and more taken away from them. They're not supported the way that they should be. Their families aren't supported the way that they should be. They're not honored the way that they should be. So I think that it's our job, even if in, in a small way like this, because this may seem like a small part to us, but to them, I'm sure this is huge to know that people appreciate them, think about them, and care about them. And just that people took the time out to do something for them could honestly change their whole life. Because we know our government I doesn't care about them. I have a request to make a flip book. So I am going to do a flip book on video, which will be fun. I haven't made a flip book in a while. I'm going to show you guys how I throw together my flip books. It's not thrown together. <laughs> and I have a request that somebody would like one of my, another pocket letter. So I am going to do another pocket letter video. I want to get my jelly prints that I made. I told the people on my live stream that I would further embellish those. My intention was to do that soon. And then I did my um, first faith art unedited video because I needed to get that done on Sunday, which was the day after my live stream. And that was a big video. That was, um, that was a long video and I needed to prep for that video. And um, that took a lot of editing and uploading and all of that. So that took me most of the day. And because I had the girls that weekend, it just seemed like a long, a long weekend because you know I had them and because I had a lot of a lot of um, videoing to do because my live streams last a long time and thank goodness I don't have to like record edit and upload those they just upload themselves which is good the live stream part but then the next day I did the the video of the stepping stone for faith art unedited and um, that was a long video. And so the weekend just went by really quickly. And then with us starting school this week, um, I've been up later because I've been, you know, getting my videos done later in the day, which, you know, it d that doesn't really change, but, um, I've added an additional activity into my day, which is school, which is, you know, three to four hours a day. So, and there's just more routine in our day. It's not as free as the summer months. So, you know, you gotta kind of buckle down and have more of a routine, more of a schedule. Because the girls need that too. They need to learn um, how to schedule time. They don't have as much freedom with things. Wow, are we seriously almost done with this? I went by pretty quick. For me anyways, you guys are probably like, geez, speed this up. So, yeah, that's... So that's what's coming. I still need to figure out how to do the screen.
screen view of my computer so I can sh make that video for you guys on how I search for my images and print them. I just haven't found a program that I can do that with. I'm still, I did find one, but it's just not working for me. That's so frustrating. I wish that I knew more how to run my computer. <laughs> But it's pretty much, sorry, they're so loud. They're in there wrestling now. Wrestling and screeching. I'm going to take them to the park to get some of this energy out. It's two for two, it's hard for two kids that have um, ADHD to sit in a chair and learn and it's especially hard when at the beginning of the year when we are just starting school to get back into that routine so they bottle up that energy I gotta take him out to get some of it out. Okay, so I know that these ones don't have stars on them. These ones do have stars on them. There's six of these, and there's a whole bunch of these. So my original thought was to put these here on the backs, but now I'm thinking that I don't want to do that. You know, I was thinking that I can make tags like this attach this together and make a tag, but now I'm thinking I don't want to do that. So I think I'm going to turn the camera off and kind of regroup and figure out what it is that I do want to do. Okay, you guys, so I'll be back. Okay, I don't know how much of that recorded because my camera just went off and I don't know if it's because my battery was dead or if it's because I didn't push the record button. So. I'm going to explain this again. I am cutting this out of some paper that Louise sent me. Okay, so I cut those tags out and I sprayed them with two of my homemade sprays um, just to give some color to the background. And now I am going to um, just put a little bit of paint on them. So my tags are basic, you know, I, I can't decide if I want them like this or if I want them like this. I think I'm gonna do them this way. So I think I'm gonna put some blue and white type of paint. Here. So I'm just going to put a drip and a drip and then I am going to take the tip of my paintbrush and just swirl this around into a circle. I don't know, I might change this. I might, you know what, uh, hold that thought. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to do that with the stars. I'm actually going to brush this out. I don't have a navy blue paint, so I'm using this brighter color.
And I don't want clean edges. I just want it to look... I just don't want it to look all nice and tidy. So what I do want to do with this, however, is I need to grab something that I got a while back and I haven't used yet. Here they are. I got these little bottles. I got them just for this purpose. But I haven't used them yet. And what they are is they're little writers. You can put paint in here and then write with it. So I am going to squeeze some of my white paint, which they're nice because you can just squeeze the paint right into the bottle. You don't need a funnel or anything to do it. So I just took some of my Anita's all-purpose acrylic paint and squirted it directly into the bottle. I'm going to put this little cap right back on it and then put this tip on it. Make sure it's on there tight and then you pull the little pin out and then you've got a tip on here and then you can write with this you can do whatever with this so I can make little stars on here like this if I wanted it's really not what I had in mind because I wanted it to be a little bit more abstract than just that. But I could do that if I wanted to. I'm going to take my brush and brush those out because that's not really what I had in mind. Okay, so I'm going to brush that back out. But I wanted smaller little globs of paint on here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to squeeze the bottle, but I'm just going to pull the paint out from the center and make just, you know, kind of asterisk type little stars. Okay, keep going. Do you mean I'm almost done? Not more. You got three more to go. Okay, and my hand foot done. Okay, so that's kind of what I, these actually look cute just like that, but I still want to put my little ones on there since they have the flag these might be a little bit different of a design just since they've already got the blue and white but I definitely wanted to add some blue and stars on to the ones like these ones that don't have the stars on it like that I think that those will look cute on there I don't think that these ones need this but I definitely think that the ones that don't have the stars on it needed some stars on it. See, I think that that looks so much better than not having them. Okay, so I'm going to do six like this one, and then I will be back.
Okay, you guys, I just wanted to turn on the camera one more time because I found a, even a better way to make these stars. And I just wanted to share it with you. So I'm going to put paint on two more of these. I'm just doing them in twos. It just seems to be a good number for me to do these in. What's nice about acrylic paint is it, it seriously just dries quick. So you just don't have a lot of drying time with it. So I want my edges to just be feathered. I don't want any perfect lines on it. That's just me. Actually, I'm going to take another one here and use that paint that's on my brush. And these ones will probably be even more feathered and imperfect. And I need six of them with the stars on it. And then I won't have to get any more of that blue paint out. Go do the last two. Okay, so what I'm going to do for these stars okay, is I'm just going to put, and I kind of put less paint on these. This might be too small of an amount, but you just adjust it to however big you want your stars to be. Okay, and then um, take again take your tip and I just went one two three four five so you get more of a star shape rather than having all eight points on there you still have a five point star Want more paint on them, than, or you want them bigger than put them bigger. And I don't, I still don't like how bright they are, so I might just go over them with a little bit of a whitewash, or I might put some more spray, glitter spray on it, you know, just to knock them back a bit so they're just not so boom there. When I'm doing things like this, I don't like to just do it just, you know, to get it done and to get it shipped out, you know, and call it done. I like to use everything that I do as a learning experience and to just experiment with new things. So it would be very easy just to throw these together and um, say, okay, that's a project done. But I really like to make an experience out of it and to test new things on it and so um, I don't know I just like to do that I don't like to make it feel like a chore I like to learn from everything that I that I sit down to do because to me that's what makes um, it fun Because really something like this shouldn't be, it shouldn't feel like a chore. You know, I could sit down and make tons of these and get my name entered into a drawing to win something. But for me, that's seriously not what this is about. I don't even care. I told the person that's doing it, I don't even want to be entered into the drawing. I just want to make this for them and I figured 
I would tr use this opportunity to just try out some new things on it. Something that I haven't done before. And um, come up with something really cool to use probably, you know, hopefully in the future it's something that I'll want to do. I've never used this technique to make stars and I'm kind of digging it. It beats drawing a star and then filling it in with paint, that's for sure. And some of them are coming out pretty darn, pretty darn star-like. I mean, they're not all perfect, but I don't, I don't strive for perfection. So those are pretty good. And they're all different. They all look different. Even this one is cool. So I'm going to take these back over to the big table and I'm going to spray some more um, sprays on here to um, try to knock this paint back. So I'll be back in a minute. So I sprayed those ones that I painted and they're over on the other table drying, but I thought I would work on these two that I'm not painting on. And I've got this little star stamp. And I'm just going to put some stars. This ink seriously is about had it. I need to open up a new one. And I am just going to put some stars on this. I like to take my stamps off the image. Or off the image. You know what I mean, off the paper. Okay. This one, and I've mentioned this before, but see how these stamps don't have much of a um, lip on them so you've got to be really careful or you'll get like I got that little ring there so you just can't press really hard on these and these are Amy Tangerine stamps that I got at Tuesday morning but see how you ink up the whole thing because there's just not a much of a lip on there and then I've got this stamp that I got at the Creative Reuse store, and it says thank you. So I thought that I would put that on here, but I need to figure out where I'm going to put this. I'll probably do something like that and then put this up here. So I'm going to test this first because this is a used stamp and it doesn't have much of a lip on it either. So I just want to see. I think I'm going to have to get a newer ink pad. Now this is one I got at Tuesday morning and it is a Ranger ink. It's a dye ink. Hi, Grandma. Look, hi. Haley got her bangs cut today. Does it feel better? Mm hmm So typically on dye inks, you don't, it's a different pad. Like this is a spongy pad. 
and this is more of a cloth pad. We got that a ranger pack right there. So I can't press real hard with this because then I'm going to get images from the actual stamp too. So I think we're going to go like right about here. Okay, not bad. For why these is it have a different color, like pink, <laughs> pink. Um, no reason. Maybe I get one if I get bigger, right, Grandma? I am going to take my glue. And I'm going to put this here. This one. Oh. Mama, do you my teeth is getting bigger right here? Yep. I try to pull it, but I actually do not want to. Well, it's not loose enough to pull. Because it's going to hold it. Well, it has to be looser than that to pull. Because that's going to hold it, right, Kimma? Yeah. No, right. No, this, no. I think this, I one, this one right here is gone. My sister knocked it out west. I think I knock it out by women. This one. At and 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 yeah. Okay. I think right That's here a shiny like block so right here is kinda getting loose. Another one. I'm gonna put my hole. I think this Take my old older ink pad that's just about done, and these are great to use for your edges because you can push the paper into it and get the ink. So even when you think your ink pads are about done, they're great to use for this to go around the edges of your projects. So there's that so far, but I still think it needs more on it. Hmm. I think I'm going to write for your service down here, but I think I'm going to write it in my own handwriting. So usually things don't write so well on all of this. But I'm going to give it a try. Not bad. Then I think I'll take. Here, yeah, Emma. This one, these two is right. Okay, just put them down. I think I'll take my, um, just my jelly roll pen. 
we'll put some dots on the outside of these stars in a couple of places just to add a little more to it make them stand out bring some life to the outside of the card There are three dots, Ramo. Three dots. Now why you have to do three dots on that? I don't know. I just always tend to do three dots. I like the three dots. Looking on here, it's hard with the glare from the metallic to find all my stars. I have one here. One over here. I think we're good. I like it. I don't think it needs any more than that. What do you guys think? Okay, so that's one. I'm going to call that good. Now I could go and put a personal message on the back of this, which I might. Is there a help? It kind of has a personal message on the front here. Thank you for your service. Um, but I might, you know, put a little more of a Thanksgiving message on here. You know, sending blessings on this holiday from my family to yours or something like that. But that's the front, and that's the main thing, except for um, a tag. Yes. Have lots of so I think for a string on my front, I want to keep it pretty general so that if they choose, you know, when they're putting the baskets together, if they choose to actually use this for a tie, which would save them some time. Um, which they may or may not, but regardless, it'll be there if they want to use it. I'm just going to do it simple, just like that. And I think that it's good. I think we're good to go. Is there a still one? I have to look like that one. Okay, so that was one with the that has the stars on the actual heart itself. So let's do one of these. So see, I sprayed it. It really didn't knock it back a lot, but it did add some color into that stark whiteness. So there's one that has the more of the asterisk type, and then here's one that has more of the smaller, the smaller. So we're, it doesn't really matter to me. So again, this one, I've inked the outside of my heart. So I'm gonna take my glue I'm going to put it on my heart. And I am going to place my heart over here, which I think looks so cool on this one because it represents the stripes on my flag. And I think what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to put my thank you right in the center of my heart. And I love it, love it, love it. So I was really kind of sad that I didn't have more of this heart because I liked this the blue and the stars on the actual heart itself. But I am actually liking this tag just as much, if not a little bit better. So see how things just kind of work out? It's amazing, isn't it? 
I think I'm going to put this stamp into this dye ink just because that other ink pad is a little bit on the fritz for me there. And I am going to go ahead and try to put some of these images, these stars stamps on here just to add a little bit onto this background. I'm not going to go crazy with it because, you know, this one's pretty busy. Or I maybe should have done that before I put my heart down, so that's something to, you know, think about before I do the rest of these tags. And I am going to add my dots because I just think it adds a little bit of brightness to the background of this tag. It kind of pulls a little bit of everything together on this. Okay, you guys, so here we are. I am done with those tags with this paper. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six with the stars over here on the corner on the left hand side and then I've got two with the stars on the hearts. So that is eight tags that I made fairly quickly. Um, it wasn't real hard. Um, you guys got to see the process of how simple it is. So um, I hope that you guys, you know, make it just a couple, just a couple of them. Um, if you want to make tags, but you want to make it simpler to mail, you know, you can just honestly, if you choose to make tags and you want to just punch the hole in it, go ahead and leave off the strings and I can add strings to it when I get them here. I have plenty of this jute and I don't mind doing that at all. And then that way you can just stick them in um, a flat envelope and put a stamp on it and it won't cost you much at all to ship. And then I will um, add string to them and send them on to my friend Kim so that they can um, get to the proper place in order to get there on time to send out to the vets for Thanksgiving. Remember, I am going to need to have them two weeks prior to October, August, September. So I would need them by, let's say, the 19th. I will need them by September 19th. If you want to send them directly to me, my address is in the description box feel free to do so. You can make tags, you can make cards, you can make ATCs. You can just simply make a little piece of paper. They don't even need to be ATC size. Just a little piece of paper, decorate it and show your appreciation um, in a theme of Thanksgiving, um, American, um, something to do with fall. Um, let's just show the veterans how much we appreciate them. And again, if um, you want to go over to Facebook and join the group yourself and enter the drawing. Each card that you make will get you an entry into the drawing. And um, there's some great prizes going on over there. You can definitely check those out. If you don't want to join the Facebook group and do it that way, you're more than welcome to just make them and send them directly to me. So let's um, give a hand up here and show our appreciation in just this small little way. Okay, you guys, so thanks for taking the time out to watch this video. Thanks for helping us out, out with this, um, this show of appreciation. And um, have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And as always, God bless. Bye, guys.